Hi guys, this is Nadia from Mibali Crafts and today I want to show you how to wrap a shark tooth fossil or any other object of similar shape in, in wire. Um, now I do have PDF tutorial and a full kit available for the same thing in my Etsy shop. So pop over and have a look and see if there's anything that, that you like. Um, if you like my tutorials, consider subscribing because I upload new stuff on a regular basis. Alright, so let's get started. So to begin with, we need to determine the size of the weave we need to go around the stone. Obviously, it's not quite as easy to figure that out with a like it would be with a you know capuchon which is round. So what we're going to do is just take a piece of scrap wire like that. So I've used just some of my point three, and I've wrapped it around the stone approximately where I know the weave will sit, and this gives me an approximate length. So I am going to line this up on my cut wires to determine sort of the midpoint where the weave will sit and where my starting point should be. And I'm just going to mark the wires where I'm going to start the weave uh, approximately. Um, so this one's not very visible, so I'll use a black mark or something like that so it doesn't rub off quite as easily. So next we're going to start with the half round, which is important, needs to sit at the bottom and the rounded part needs to face you. And we're just going to attach our weaving wire at the point where we've sort of marked it off and wrap it around a few times just to anchor it in place. So next we're going to pick up the second base wire, slide it on top of the half round and what we're going to do is wrap around the second wire come in between the half round and wire two and wrap it all the way around coming back from underneath so just bring the wire back down facing towards you and then up again and then next we're going to bring in the last wire and obviously you could you know incorporate more wires if you've got a bigger tooth or something like that you could add an extra wire in and um, you're just going to adapt the design slightly for that at a later stage so what we're going to do next is we come in between wire 1 and 2 and we wrap around wire 2 once. So we're just going to call all the wires 1, 2 and 3 regardless whether it's half round or round. So once we've wrapped around wire 2, we are going to come all the way around wire 1 and 2 and wrap around those once. And next we're going to wrap the weaving wire around wire one three times now i've done it five times here but i decided later that i would prefer to do it three times because it brings the sort of weave closer together and and makes it a little bit more intricate so you can decide whichever version you prefer best i decided in the end to go with them um, three wraps on the base wire in between each pyramid and that's what it looks like so far so next we're going to continue until we hit the mark and this is what it looks like. So I'm just going to um, determine the length and it's slightly longer and the reason being for that is we're going to create a little um, indent sort of curvature to go up the back of the tooth. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute and this will obviously take a little bit of weaving wire away. Um, so you need a bit of extra length. So we're going to find the midpoint of the weave and we're just going to bend it like that so that you have a little bit of a I think it's called a chevron um chevron shape and we're going to place that against and you could have it going straight but I thought it looks nice if you have a little bit of a curvature like that so then we're very gently going to bend this around the stone obviously be careful you don't want to damage the stone um, so in the end you see that little sort of jagged um, tooth on the end I broke that off later so take care not to do that when working with them obviously they're quite old those teeth um, so you want to take care not to damage them so we're just going to shape the wires around the tooth and at this stage everything is going to be still quite loose and um, you don't want to press down too much until you're finished so we need to just keep adjusting the weave so it roughly sits at the back of the stone you need this for balance if it's too far forward the tooth won't sit right on the neckline so go as further past back as far back as possible 
So next we need to line up the wires to sit parallel to each other because we need to join these together. So it takes a little bit of faffing and fiddling until it all sits right. So that's what it looks like now. And once you're satisfied, we're going to bring in some more wire. Um, now I found quite frequently the wire broke with me working because the half round acts like a sharp edge and kind of gauges the wire and it breaks. So take care with that. And if that happens, just add the weaving wire back in. It's not a big deal. So it's easy enough to do. So just when it breaks off, just uh, continue, add it in as, as you did before. So all we're going to do now is wrap the weaving wire around each wire once on the way down. So we're coming from behind, wrap it around the base wire, move one down and wrap it around the base wire and so forth. So very simple uh, weave which is just intended to join all of the wires together. As I said, take care when you get to the middle because the half round um, will gauge your wires and it easily breaks. So take care there. So that's what it looks like so far and this is only just to join so usually i you know shift the weaves down with a tool so once you've done that on the way back up we're going to wrap around two wires at a time so wrap around two come in between wire one and two wrap around wire two and three come in between wire two and three and so forth so basically we're capturing two wires at a time with this weave and um, that is what we're going to do on the way back so just keep doing this um, same pattern so one wrap on the way down two wrap on the way up and we're going to do this about two or three times and, and do this basically until you're satisfied with how it looks So I'm satisfied with that. So what we're going to do next is we're bending the two half round wires in the middle. We're going to bend these outwards. And then we're going to create the shape of the bell. I found that I liked to have quite a wide bell for this. So rather than make it long and narrow, I made it sort of squat and wide. So I'm using my fingers to kind of shape the bell in a sort of a navette shape and the size here depends entirely on the size of the stone and your personal taste obviously the larger the navette the bigger the bale is going to be the only important thing is that the bale is big enough to accommodate the stone we're going to seat in um in the center so you need to make sure that half of that half of the bale is big enough to seat the stone that's what it looks like. So next we're going to, if your wire broke, um, add in some more. Uh, we need quite a lot of weaving wire for this type of uh, bale. Obviously because there's a lot of weaving, especially with the finer weaving wires like this. So we're wrapping around wire uh, three and four once. Come across the other side, wrap around wire one and two once. So we're going to separate wire one and two. Wrap around wire one and then coming from underneath towards you wrap around wire two come in between wire one and two and then we're going to move across the other side around wire three and four like so then we're going to come in between wire three and four wrap around wire four once and then coming from underneath, we are wrapping around wire three once. And this is our starting position to cross over again. So wrap around wire one and two. Come in between wire one and two, wrap around wire one. And this is the weave. So we're going to continue until we get enough of a length to seat the stone. You'll see what I mean in a second. So this is what I have. Now you need to decide on a stone. I mean, equally, uh, a teardrop will work, which is what I have used. But it will obviously be easier if you just use an oval 
um, there's a bit more surface area to keep it in place so whatever you have handy whatever you like as i said the kits i have available for this has got oval cabochons it's got all the gemstones and it's got all the wire in it so you can pop over to my website and have a look or my my etsy shop and see if you know it suits you so you place it in and i decided in the end that i like to use the teardrop because i like the color it's an amethyst so i thought it was quite suitable for this design so next what you need to do is shape the half round wire around it now this is a little bit tricky you just need to take care when shaping it because once the half round is shaped it becomes work hardened quite quickly and you don't really want to kind of mangle the way it looks because you can't really replace it so just take care when when shaping it around the stone and what we're going to do is kind of follow the shape roughly and we want to bend the wires back out again where the, the sort of bale weave stops because what we're going to do next is attach those half round wires we're going to incorporate that into the bale weave we're going to shape it and as you can see it takes a little bit of fiddling um so take care when doing this and just gently shape it if it's not 100 percent perfect at this stage that's okay you can adjust it later i'll get into that a little bit more once we have secured the wires so that's what it looks like so far and we're going to now incorporate these half rounds into the weave so we're going to bend them at a 90 degree angle so that they come back out straight now it's really important that you make sure they are sit seated right in the center when you continue to weave otherwise the stone will be set off center and obviously that's not the aim all right so we're going to do next is if your wire broke add some more weaving wire so all we're going to do is continue the bale weave but also at this stage we're going to incorporate the half round wires in the middle so as we weave the bale we're going to wrap once around each half round wire and then we are going to continue the bale weave just as we did before so once again it's around both wires then once around wire one then once around wire two from the under underside and then on the way back once again we capture the half round wire <coughs> excuse me like so and then we're just going to continue this weave two or three times um, you just need to capture the, um, the half round wires in the middle about maybe three or four times that's enough to just give uh, to seat them properly so go you can see how this will set everything in place and then as i work usually i will take a pair of bent nose pliers and i will gently push the weaves down as that will strengthen everything so now we're going to continue with this and um, we're only going to incorporate the half rounds three or four times and then we are just going to continue the bale weave as we did before without the half round wires So that's what it looks like now so i've finished so once you get to the top we need to then capture all of the wires together so as we did in the beginning we are going to wrap the wires around each wire once traveling the, on the way down so we're wrapping our weaving wire around each base wire once on the way down and then obviously take your pliers that's why i like my um my bent nose pliers so much because they're great for the solar application so that's what it looks like so far and on the way up as before we're going to capture two wires at a time so wrap around two wires then wrap around the upper two and so forth until you get to the top now again we're going to repeat these two patterns maybe two or three times 
um, enough as you can see in a little insert there to just capture all of the wires and bind them together now obviously if you made your bail too short you can use this pattern to slightly extend it once you realize it's too short and you need a bit of extra length so that's what it looks like right so now we're going to bend it so just make sure that the half round is pressed over the stone slightly you don't want to the stone to pop out so um, generally what I do is I bend the half rounds in a little bit to cover more of the stone you can always adjust the size I mean not the size the sort of seated area of the half round later on once the the, the bale has been shaped so what we need to do here is take the half round and maybe make a little gap first at this stage the wrap should be still quite loose so the half round should fit through the corners on each side like that like i'm trying to pull through the half round wires here so just kind of shape it and try and guide the half round wire through the stone obviously take care not to use too much force so that the, the stone doesn't get damaged the tooth just going to feed this through there we go and that's the starting point and now you can start shaping the the bezel very gently and kind of feed the wire through as you work so i'm pushing against the stone i want the, the small stone the amethyst i don't want it to pop out which can happen at this stage you just need to very gently keep it in place and this is a very sort of delicate stage so just take your time with that and i realized here what i should have done is those 4.8 20 gauge wires i should have trimmed those first and and folded them in which is what we're going to do at the later stage so at this stage if you want to do this now you can do it because it's much easier right now we're not going to use those wires um so cut those off and fold them in but you can do it later as well so as i work i want to make sure that the bail is shaped so i'm just bringing in some bail making pliers and obviously take care not to pop out your accent stone and i'm kind of using this to bring the bail down you can see it's a bit of a delicate operation so take care so that's what it looks like so now the next step is we want the weave to be less flimsy and and um what the what will achieve this is uh, taking the half rounds and we're going to take the half round through the center of the weave like so and this will bind the weave and the stone together and give it a lot more strength so we're going to bring it through the middle and i bring them out on the opposing side I'm going to pull this through and if you bring them out on the opposing side when you're pulling them um, they don't disappear underneath the weave which would happen if you try to pull them out on the same side the wires on if that makes sense so go to the opposing side like that and tighten it up a bit and instantly this will tighten up the whole design and obviously we're going to do the same on the other side so i've done both of them now so the next step is to now as i said earlier it's going to be a little bit more tricky to get rid of those wires so um if you had done it if you did this earlier it would have been easier it, it's still achievable but it would have been easier later i didn't wasn't sure what i was going to do with the wires so i didn't cut them but i should have <clears throat> so i'll keep that in mind for the next time i do this design so we're just going to bend these in tuck them away as we're not going to use them again and what we're going to do now with the half round from the front we're going to sort of bend these around the half round wires coming out the back if that makes sense so just kind of fold it round with some fine tipped pliers and this is just to anchor everything in place 
and you'll see that doing this will instantly tighten up the weave and the stone is quite secure so that's what it looks like from the front and the last step is to add as an accent bead so i'm using some 0.6 wire for this um so just attach it wherever and that's that so i really hope you enjoyed this tutorial um i have many more in my etsy shop as i said i've got loads of kits available as well um please visit our artist group which is called wire wrap and draw we artists worldwide we always have some fun challenges going and I think in general we're quite a fun group to be in so it would be lovely if um, you'd pop by. Also I've got um, my social media which is in Bali Crafts across the board. This is uh, Instagram, Facebook or TikTok so it would be lovely to see you there. See you soon.